joining me tonight uh, for this uh, nice little meditation session where we're going to be going through uh, uh, a few different layers of self. <clears throat> so at any one time, our, well, our mind is an amazing thing because we can go uh, forwards and backwards in time and we can also be in the present moment. Uh, which is, you know, ideally we want to spend as much time in the present moment as we can. Uh, but as a result of uh, all the things that go on in life acti life's activities, uh, sometimes we're left ruminating in the past or uh, running through baggage uh, of the past. And a lot of the time when we're thinking about the future, uh, we're stuck in a state of anxiety um, and uh, stressed out about uh, what is in the future. So we're not really spending as much time in the present moment as we otherwise could be. So what I hope to achieve with today is to uh, address all those three layers of self, the past self, present self, and the future self, so that we can uh, uh, let go of some things uh, that might have bothered you uh, in the, <coughs> from the past, uh, feel gratitude for those things that you feel in the present moment, and then have some hope for uh, things that you're looking forward to in the future and uh, have some positive affirmations uh, to bring those things about. Okay. And, uh, and afterwards we're also going to go through uh, another meditation, uh, but we'll get to that one when it comes. So first of all, I'd just like you to have a comfortable seated position. You can, um, you can, you can sit down have a cushion, have a block, however you like, <coughs> or if you would prefer, you can even just lie down flat on your back. It's uh, not overly important for this one. Uh, you may also want to have a, uh, a notepad nearby, uh, just in case there's uh, anything that comes up, uh, uh, so something inspiring, or uh, you know some of the visualizations, you could also just physically write things uh, down. Um, but uh, not necessary that you have a pen and paper, but if you do, it might be helpful. All right. So, if you're lying down, just lying down, and if you're sitting, just sitting nice and tall, lowering your chin down slightly. And first, just bringing awareness into your body. Awareness to your breathing. Just noting is it, a, is it a deep breath or is it a shallow breath? I'm not trying to impose anything on it, just observing that you're breathing. A bit of awareness to your body. The sensations that you're feeling. Sensations of uh, skin, the feeling of the clothes on you. The feeling of uh, the temperature of your air around you. And then awareness to something that you hear. Housemates got the light mix on downstairs, so he's he stopped finally. If you're wondering what that sound was, but just be aware of something uh, that you hear in your room where you are. And then being aware of what's behind your eyes. Just notice what colour do you see on the back of your eyelids. Initially it's just black. Uh, find the longer I observe the back of the eyelids, the uh, more other things I start to notice. It's not black at all. There's all these white dots and it's almost a bit like a static on a television on uh, when it's on standby. Which I don't think, uh, I don't think TVs really do the static thing anymore, but 
Yeah, like an old TV that does the black and white snow static. That's what the back of my eyes look like. Just observe that uh, what you see on the back of your eyes. So, uh, I can hear you starting up the Vitamix again. So just your awareness to uh, all those different senses. That is helping bring you more into the present moment. Okay. These are things, your sense of sensation, your sense of sound, your sense of sight. They're all things that you're directly perceiving as present moment self. And when you come into awareness of any of these three, or all of these three simultaneously, you powerfully come into the present without uh, as much interference from a uh, past or future self. So if you want a simple thing that's going to take you out of uh, uh, depression about the past, or anxiety about the future, or anything like that, you can stop whatever that thought process is that's leading you into those um, negative states and just come into awareness of uh, three senses. Something you hear, something you see, something you feel. With today's session, we're first going to start working through the past. Okay. So with that same present moment awareness, you need to visualize that there's a piece of paper in front of you and a pen in front of you. Or maybe you've got a paper and a pen in front of you and you might want to Get your hand and pick up your pen. Otherwise, just visualize that this is happening. You're writing on the top of the page things that I would like to let go of. Things that I would like to let go of. Before you write any more, I just want you to think about what those things might be. Maybe you want to quit smoking. Maybe you want to stop some other kind of <coughs> negative pattern. Maybe it's something, a partner from the past, maybe there's still attachments there and pain that you're finding it difficult to let go of. That's a big one. They're the hardest ones. Maybe you're mourning the loss of somebody. current situation, maybe you lost a job, whatever it is, whatever it is that you know that you want to let go of, just consider uh, a few of them for the moment, and feel really strongly, these are things that I really want to let go of, I haven't been able to let go of them, but I want to let go of them. Think of what those things might be.
Now I want you to start to prioritize what those things are that you're letting go of. Can't let go of everything straight away, but you can pick your top three things that you thought of just now that you wanted to let go of. And visualize that piece of paper that you had, or if you have a piece of paper, you could write it down. Write down number one, number two, number three. Things that I'd like to let go of. Give you some time now to write those things out in your mind. If you've got the paper, write them down on the piece of paper. Now, have you written those things down? I just want you to look back over that list. And anything that you've had in your life, it's always been there for a reason. It might have been really uncomfortable, whatever it was, or something that bothered you a lot, or Maybe it was something that was uh, really precious and it really hurts that it's gone. But these are all things that you're wanting to let go of. So now I want you to look over each of those three things and one at a time we're going to go through um, uh, something that makes you very at peace with uh, with those things that you're wanting to let go of before you say goodbye to them for good. And this is, uh, you may have heard of uh, Ho'oponopono. It's a Hawaiian thing. It's told by um, the uh, who runs the uh, ayahuasca ceremonies that uh, uh, they did this in Hawaii and um, they did it at psychiatric centers and prisons and uh, they would just get prisoners to go up to each other and say this or psychiatric uh, patients to go up to each other and say this and I would say four most powerful words that um, help you make peace with somebody or something else. Just, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And what they found was by doing those four words, then um, they could, uh, you know, if they were prisoners, they would at least become, they, unless you know, they were dramatically uh, changed by doing that practice, they would at least become more tolerable people in society. And the same with the uh, psychiatric wards, it uh, yeah, had massive positive results for them. This is also it's a beautiful way to let go and say goodbye to some things that you want to let go of. So reading over each of these three things that you want to let go of, to each one, these words, I love you. Sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. Even if the words don't necessarily mean that much to that thing that you're letting go of, and the feeling might reflect otherwise. I 
I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. One by one, through each of the things you wrote down, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Yeah, just take your time to go through each of them. And with those things that you've uh, written down, uh, you've said you've had your peace with them, with those kindest words that you could say to somebody or something else. You've been in my life, you've benefited me, but now I've got to say goodbye. I'm letting go. You take that piece of paper and you fold it up Give it one last goodbye. Give it a kiss. And you walk over to a lovely burning fire, however you want it to be. Maybe it's a uh, nice, cozy indoor fire, or maybe you've got a Guy Fawkes style big bonfire going. You've actually got your physical piece of paper. I want you to take a moment now to take that piece of paper, go outside, and with the lighter, light it on fire. You can go do that now. For everybody else, just visualizing that you've let go of that piece of paper, it's gone into the fire and you're starting to watch it burn. First it doesn't burn, but then a second later it's bursted into flames. You see it start to curl and the paper start to contort under the heat. And all the paper slowly turning to ashes, and you can just see the marks of the ink still through the ashes. But it keeps burning, and the ash starts to float away. And soon enough, the whole thing disintegrates, and there's just a few skirts of dusty ash still sitting around in there. And they'll be gone soon too. Woo! Fully let go of those things that you didn't want in your life. And now you go back over to your seat. Hopefully those that went outside and were lighting things on fire, they've uh, managed to do that without lighting anything else on fire. Maybe they've gone under a 5G tower and just started combusting straight away. <laughs> or with any luck, they've uh, lit it on fire and lit the tower on fire as well. I'm just kidding. So you go back over to your meditation cushion, and where you see that is a, another piece of paper. And this time you've got more work to do. You 
now you've got to address your present moment self. It's one that we avoid so much or that a lot of the time that we're <coughs> in the present moment, we're focused on problems with the present moment and we so we, we run away from the present and uh, run to something in the past or something in the future for comfort. Not really knowing that uh, it is the present moment where we can really find the peace. So, bring yourself into the present. Let go of the past now, sort of bring yourself back. Something that you feel, awareness of sensation. Something that you hear, notice the sound in your room. Something that you can see. Just whatever colors on the back of your eyes. And breathe. Always awareness of breath. Now visualizing this new piece of paper where we're going to address the present self. You've got the title at the top of the page. Things that I'm most grateful for. Things that I'm most grateful for. It's a really powerful antidote to running away from the present moment all the time. Just observing the things that you're most grateful for. The attitude of gratitude is uh, really powerful thing to bring a lot more joy and joy into your life. One good thing is to wake up every morning and think of a few things that you're grateful for or every time before you go to bed, think of a few things that you're grateful for and it'll make you a much happier person. But now you've got to come up with three things you're most grateful for in your life. They can be anything. Whatever springs to your mind, just think of a few things first. Maybe it's just having a roof over your head or food on the table. Maybe it's having a body that still functions. You've still got you still got your legs, you still got your arms, you still got your eyesight. Maybe you lost your job, but you're grateful that you're getting so much money from Centaur. <laughs> Maybe it's someone that's closest to you. Your beloved or brother or your sister, maybe you've got a child, they're really easy to feel grateful for. I don't have them, but love for a child, I can imagine that's very strong. Maybe your pet, whatever it is, take a few moments now to think of the things that you're most grateful for. You got them? 
Now what you're going to do, on that piece of paper, you write down the top three things. It doesn't have to be in any order. Three things I'm most grateful for. Either writing them down or actually visually see yourself with the pen in your hand. That's very important. See the pen, see the notepad, watch the words being written out by your own hand. The three things that I'm most grateful for. The more strongly you can um, visualize this sort of stuff, uh, the more powerful uh, it'll be to you. Rather than, you know, just going like, oh yeah, pretty grateful for my cat. Yeah, that's uh, good. I like having a roof over my head. Yep, yep. And then just forgetting about it. You actually physically write it down, or if you're doing it visually, visually see everything, use the power of your imagination to really feel the things that you're most grateful for. What you do with that piece of paper is fold it up and just put that into your back pocket. You better put it into your wallet. Something that's going to be with you all the time. If you put it into your back pocket, it's probably going to go through the wash. Put that piece of paper into your wallet. Those three things that you wrote down, whether they are um, physical or maybe they're a, an object or a person, I want you to take some time after today's meditation to look over that list. If it is a person, contact that person. Let them know that you were doing a meditation and thinking about things that you were most grateful for and that they came up on the top of your list. It'll be so chuffed to hear that. I remember once one of my friends uh, actually did that. They were writing in their, they have a gratitude diary and they wrote uh, that they were most grateful for me uh, for being part of their life. And yeah, that's uh, it feels so nice to know that you're, um, you're loved in that way. So, if there is people on your uh, sheet of paper, let them know about it. If it's your pet, let them know about it. Sorry, if you've got a pet, then you're letting them know about it all the time. But really, let them know about it after this uh, after this session. Even if it's just a roof over your head, next time you go outside, just look at the roof and just like stare at it and give it a few nods and yep, yep that's a good roof. <laughs> just feeling gratitude for those things is, can really turn that around. Now you peel that piece of paper away off your notepad, you see that there's another piece of paper and written at the top of that piece of paper is things that I would like to bring into my life. Things that I would like to bring into my life. So this is the big wish list. Now can really write whatever you want down onto here. Uh, really feeling that you know anything that you want is 
oh, that's too shallow to want that, or that's, um, you know, something's too greedy to want, or, or that's unrealistic to wish for that, you know, whatever. All those kind of like, oh, no, maybe I shouldn't. It's um, feelings of, uh, it's putting them, you know, if you believe that the universe conspires in some way to bring what you need into your life, if you're giving out a message of uh, uncertainty and not feeling worthy of receiving that thing that you want, then it makes it far less likely that uh, that thing is going to be achieved. So, what I'd like you to do is don't be constrained by any of that stuff. Don't think that, you know, things aren't achievable. Think of the things that you want, but know that you really want them. That's the most important thing. Note, I really want this thing in my life. Now, it could be uh, the person that you want to become. You want to become a more kind, generous, loving person in some way. Maybe you want to do something incredible. You want to feed the starving children in Africa, or you uh, want to abolish factory farming, or maybe, maybe it's uh, just something physical, maybe you just want a new car. <laughs> that $500 hatchback has run its course and it's time to get something new. Maybe it's a dream holiday to um, Mongolia. Maybe it's a particular career that you've been thinking about since you lost, lost your job in lockdown and now you've got to look for something new. Think about what those things are that you want to bring into your life. But just be certain that you really want those things. And you're just going to stay for the next minute or so thinking about all the different things that you would like to bring in your life. Don't even limit it to three things right now. Just go through all the things that your imagination can come up with. I'd like this, I'd like this, I'd like this. Yes, yes, I think you're the, like king of the castle and you can have anything that you want really envision a future of having those things. Okay, so we'll take a few moments with that. Okay. How to think about what those things are? So now what you do with uh, all those different things, you make a priority list. What's the top three things that you want to bring into your life? Either physically have that piece of paper in front of you and write those three things down. One, two, three. Things that I'd like to bring in my life. Or if you don't have the paper handy, just visualizing it in your head. 
three things that I'd most like to bring into my life. And again, with making these things, uh, you know, creating a, a link to that part of your mind that's going to make sure that these things will happen in some way. And don't worry if you can't imagine how exactly it's going to happen. Just know and trust that this thing is going to be coming to you. Hold that feeling as you're writing it down. Oh yeah, that <coughs> that new car or this this person that I want to be or whatever it is that you're wanting to bring into your life. It's coming, it's coming. Visualize the pen, writing it. Visualize the paper and take a moment to write those three things down. Now that you've got those three things, you're either physically going to do this or just visualizing it in your mind that you're taking that piece of paper you've written down on and you're putting it somewhere in your room that's going to be the first thing that you see in the morning so that you can remind yourself every single day that, oh, that's what I really want to bring into my life. And the more times you're reminded of those things that you want to bring into your life, the more likely that those things are going to happen for you. So you can either stick it next to your bedside table, or I remember once I've done it, I stuck it up onto my ceiling. So the first thing I open my eyes, I'd see the ceiling like, oh yeah, <coughs> those are the things I want to bring in my life. At least a tiny part of every day will be made towards working towards that goal, even if it is just having read it as the first thing in the morning. Eventually, those things are going to come. Okay, so you've stuck that into place, or if you've got your physical bit of paper, you can uh, stick that up later on. Maybe I'll put it into a frame. And you can always add to this list as well. But once you've got those things, just write a new list. It's never ending. So now for your next stage. <clears throat> Well, we've already dealt with the past, present, and future uh, levels of self. We're going to go uh, now into something a little bit um, more of moving into uh, the heart. Okay. And one thing that the heart is very connected to is the smile. We know that when a person smiles, that the body releases more dopamine. So therefore, automatically, when we smile, even if it's a fake smile, the studies have shown, when you smile, the body releases serotonin, a happy chemical, and you're more likely to be in a happy state. I have to uh, I'll credit uh, my dear friend uh, Ben, he's a uh, um, meditation, uh, 
life full of a meditation master. He's uh, only a couple of years older than me, but uh, spent most of his life just sitting down meditating. He just, I think he was a uh, fashion designer at some point. And he, um, yeah, he decided, no, nah, don't want to do that. And he just went, started going around the world and um, sought out different meditation masters, sought out different both modern and traditional methods. And anyway, long story short, a couple of years ago, I was hanging out with him and um, he taught me this method, the smiling, smiling heart meditation practice, he called it. And this is how it works. So you bring awareness to your heart. Bring all your awareness to that area. Maybe you can feel the sensation of the heart. It's beating in the center of the chest. Just be aware of the heart. And then from that place at the heart, you're bringing the feeling of smile down into your heart. <clears throat> Not actually a physical smile at this stage, it's just the feeling of smile. And from that feeling of smile, you slowly bring awareness, slowly bring awareness from there and feel it uh, start to expand outwards. And now this feeling of smile is not just uh, contained in the heart, but it's contained in your entire chest. through your shoulders, through your whole body, and as it starts to rise up through your throat, it's going towards your face, and now the physical smile is starting. Slight curling of the lips, lifting of the cheekbones softening at your eyebrows softening at the forehead and a little bit of wrinkling at the corners of the eyes just letting the smile form on your face and sitting there with the sensations and the feeling of smile no need for a dialogue to it just a smile. And then letting that smile drop away, back to stone face, regular expression. And notice how the feeling changes as you let the smile go away. Okay. So you probably notice that there's quite a bit of a change in the, in the feeling when you're smiling and when you're not smiling. <laughs> thing there is that when you're smiling, your um, body's releasing this chemical uh, serotonin and uh, that's almost just like sending drugs to your brain. Your brain likes it when you give it more serotonin. It makes it really chuffed. So when it's not there, it just goes back into a regular meh state. Okay. 
So now what we're going to do is so uh, call this the pumping the smile phase. Bring awareness to your heart, the feeling of smile in the heart. Bring awareness through the throat. Awareness to the face. Bit of a curling of the lips, lifting of the cheekbones, squinting at the corners of the eye, and the smile forming across the face. Resting with your smile, just resting with the sensation. All the smile, nothing else to do. If thoughts arise, go back to the smile. And then let the smile drop away again. And just note the change in the sensation change in the feeling. Just note it. And then starting again with the awareness of the heart. Feeling of smile at the heart. The effulgence of that feeling spreading through the heart, through the body. Rising up through your throat. Like you can't contain it, the lips start to curl, the cheeks start to lift, some crinkling at the corners of the eyes, letting the smile form. And staying there with your smile, just noting the smile. And then letting the smile drop away. No smile. Back to stone face. And this last one is going to be a bit different. This one is going to be bringing awareness to the smile again, but it's instead of pumping the smile, just letting it come and go, you can try and sustain the smile using the smile as your meditation object. So you're bringing a smile to the face and then maintaining your awareness on it. But it's going to be a bit like a game that you keep your smile so long as you can maintain your awareness with the smile. As soon as you lose awareness with the smile, then you lose the smile as well. So once you've noticed that your mind has started to think thoughts, mm -hmm. no more smile allowed. You, the smile drops off. And it's almost like just taking the candy away from the mind. And then you would start again, bringing awareness to the heart, the throat, bringing the smile to the face, feeling the smile, holding the smile. And so long as you maintain awareness with the smile, you can keep the smile. As soon as the awareness goes wavering, you make the smile go away, and you start again from the heart, back up through to the face. So what this does is it, well, it teaches you to well, live from your heart, but also to have your heart and yourself in the present moment. And you're giving yourself a... Uh, a positive reward system here to stay more in the present moment. Because the more that you're in the present moment, 
the more serotonin your brain gets given and makes it want to stay in the present moment. I like to use this in meditation, but also in uh, asana practice. When I stand on the mat in the morning before I, uh, I start practicing, let a smile come to the face. It's a smile, a smile of gratitude. And a smile at the end of practice also gives thanks. Smile when you're doing the dishes. You can make the things that are an effort become a joy and you almost hacking your mind to want to go and do those things even more because you've created this uh, positive reward system. So at the moment we're doing it with practicing meditation and practicing staying with the moment. Okay. So again, the rules, awareness of the heart, feeling of smile in the heart, then allowing the smile to come through the face, observing all the sensations of smile. As soon as awareness goes away from the smile, who's the smile? And then once you've got awareness back again, bring the smile back. So we call this sustaining the smile phase. So let you begin in your own time. We'll just do it for a couple of minutes. Worry if it uh, doesn't even last too long before the mind gets distracted. Just keep practicing. Imagining it's like you're carving into a piece of wood. Initially, it's kind of hard to get the groove going, but then you carve more and more and more, and you create this uh, nice rut that uh, the mind can sit into and sink easily into the present.
Okay. We ended on a good note. If you lost the smile, bring the smile back. And um, blinking the eyes open. Bringing your awareness back into the room. Well done. That's awesome. Thank you very much, everyone who has uh, stayed online through this. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work to go through all that stuff that we went at the start, uh, addressing these past, present, and future layers of self. And um, yeah, and as well for uh, doing the smiling meditation. That's um, that's my favourite type of meditation to do, uh, actually, to just stay with uh, the present moment and uh, feed my mind serotonin drugs. Um, I'll take a few minutes now to just answer any of the comments or questions that are on here. I see there's a few on the uh, Facebook feed. So. Oh, no, they're not questions, they're just saying who was watching. Okay, cool. Ah, oh, it's nice to see so many uh, familiar names there. Thanks for watching, guys, and, and girls. Tracy, what did you say? Oops. Sorry, you had to leave. I've got drilling behind the walls. Thank you for the session. Hopefully I'm not interrupted next time. Namaste. No worries, Tracy. Yeah, sounded like I had some drilling here as well with, um, yeah, the blender going off downstairs. I'm not sure if you could uh, all hear that on this end, but